Hi, I'm Andrew Berry, and welcome to At The Bench's YouTube channel. Something we haven't touched on our YouTube channel, and that's cuttlefish casting. We're gonna show you how to do a very, very simple cuttlefish cast today. Nothing elaborate, nothing fancy, just something that is really quite simple. And this is a brilliant technique to practice really cheaply. And you can also recycle your unwanted, perhaps not unwanted, but your broken bits of silver jewelry, the unwanted scraps that you may have lying around in your tray or little bits and pieces that you can't really sort of utilize in another project. Now, when we use our silver, our scrap silver, it is important to make sure that the silver is clean. So what do I mean by clean? What you don't want to do is to have anything with solder that is on the silver. It has to be clean, not quite fresh, but free of any solder. Because the solder may lower the quality of the silver, it may also impart different properties because you're melting like a, a solder alloy in with the silver alloy, and you may not get a nice cast. So preferably you want offcuts. These are little offcuts I've got here. There's something that I've um, sawn out of a, a bezel. There's some little bits and pieces here that I've drilled, that I've stamped and so forth. Little strip that I've cut off and an off cut. These sort of bits of silver are ideal. You're gonna need more silver than what you actually need to cast with, and we'll come to that just a little bit later. But let's turn our attention to the cuttlefish that we're gonna be using. You can buy cuttlefish at a variety of stores in your particular country. You can buy it from your jewelry tools suppliers. But what I like to do is to visit my local pet shop where I can touch the cuttlefish. Sounds weird, I know, but touch the, am I a bit like that? <laughs> touch the cuttlefish and look for the best pieces because I think they're sold by weight. So you really wanna get a good, substantial bit of cuttlefish. I've got quite a few in front of me here. I've got some quite large varieties like this here. This is quite, um, and a few of those who don't know what cuttlefish is, it is the bone left after the cuttlefish fish dies. And these get swept up upon the beaches around the country as well and around the world. One side has got a hard shell, the other side a little bit softer. And what we can do, we can utilize this to cast with. And this is uh, an age old technique that goes back thousands and thousands of years. I like to choose my cuttlefish. I like to choose them quite nice, thick and plump. You get cuttlefish that are very, very thin and quite narrow. I tend to go for the thicker ones because it enables you to use one piece of cuttlefish for one cast. You have two, two smaller pieces, um, two thinner piece, but then you're gonna have to have two cuttlefish to put together for your cast. But nice, thick, plump ones with a nice sort of thick belly in the middle are absolutely ideal. And what you need to do before you go any further is to go onto your patio or go outside against a nice uh, stone, flat stone wall, and is to rub the cuttlefish. And what we need to do, we've got the hard shell this side. What we need to do is to flatten this softer side, this belly side, until we get a nice flat area. And I've done that already. I do this against my uh, neighbor's wall when he's not looking and he's always wondered what this white powder is on the floor. It's my cuttlefish, haven't told him, I'm not going to either. And we've got a nice flat area along here. The cuttlefish, because it is a skeleton, it has the most gorgeous, gorgeous texture. And this texture is only really obtainable by using cuttlefish. Let me put these away a second. Uh, you can repeat the texture by casting something in cuttlefish and then getting a mold made of that in uh, rubber and then you can inject it with wax and lost wax cast and so forth. But I'm not interested in that. This is a one-off 
pattern. And it's ideal for doing large, rough, organic shapes. Or even what we're gonna be doing today is actually carving into the cuttlefish. And in the past, I've done this with a few students and also uh, for a couple of films on At The Bench, which is our online training website, atthebench.com. These are just a simple couple of cutouts and I'll be doing the similar so sort of thing today. These are almost like sort of like arrowheads, like prehistoric arrowheads. You can see the texture on the back of the pieces here from obviously two different cuttlefishes. Cuttlefishes? Cuttlefish. You can only use this cuttlefish once. Once you've used it, it burns, it gives off a weird and nasty smell. Some people say it's a nice smell, some people say it doesn't smell at all, uh, but it does give off a very nasty fishy sort of smell. And you can see the textures that we've got on the back of these pieces. Cast in different cuttlefish, texture is completely different, but very, very unique to cuttlefish casting. All right, so let's crack on. We've got this cuttlefish, it's nice and flat. I can utilize this fairly short piece of cuttlefish and I can cut this one directly in half and we can use those two halves to make our mold. We're gonna be carving into this particular piece of cuttlefish today. Let's just cut this in half, approximately in half. The soft part is really easy. Then you've got that little bit of a, a harder, skeleton shell-like across that side there. Simply cut that in half. We have now got two halves that we can put together that's gonna to make our cuttlefish mold. Several ways you can make using cuttlefish. What we've done in the past is made ingots out of um, using cuttlefish, and what we've done is made these little ingot shape, almost like a chunk of chocolate. I think this is done in some Daz clay. Or you can carve out of wax, nice bulbous hearts as we've got here. You can use wax, you can carve out, this is a project I did for, I think, Sharon's husband who works for us. This was a nice, I did this in Delft clay. I found this in Delft clay, but you can still use this in cuttlefish. And also you can even use ready-made rings that, as I've got here, and we can also cast this type of ring. As I said to you, the finish is quite rough. If you want it perfectly smooth, mirror-like finish, you're gonna to have to do quite a bit of filing, but this is a brilliant technique to use that texture. I'm gonna be doing something very similar to these sort of arrowheads that we've done in the past. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna have a one-sided mold, which means we are gonna carve into one half of the cuttlefish and the other half will be flat and we will just simply put that upon the back. You have to allow for a pouring channel when it, it comes to the cuttlefish casting as most casting techniques that you can do. So you need a, quite a large area to pour the silver, the molten silver, into. The larger that pouring channel, the more silver's gonna get into your mold fast, and that's exactly what we're after. When you come to design your piece, don't have the silver going into the smallest, thinnest, narrowest areas. So in something like this arrowhead, for instance, that we have, we have the silver coming down in this direction, from the top. This is the largest area. The silver will go in and then it'll fill the smallest area down here. What you don't want to do is to have it this way up and for the silver to come down into the smallest, narrowest point because you wanna get the silver into this piece as fast as possible. And likewise, if you were making a ring like this, this is the thickest area. Not much point having it this way up and trying to get the silver to come down into this small, thin, narrow area and to come all the way around to try and fill this larger area. You would have the sprue and the pouring channel in the head here. That's the biggest, thickest area. And then you know the silver will travel and it's not going to solidify. But we'll come to those type of castings um, in later films where we have more of a, a two-part mold. So let's have a look. Let's uh, just get a scribe and let's just work on the one half that we have. And we're gonna basically make a bit of a, a pouring channel. This is just marking this roughly on here so we got this area that we then can replicate on our other piece as well. And from that area, 
the silver is going to be coming down in this direction, down here. So when we come to carve out our pattern, whatever pattern you want, it has to be in this area down here. We're going to work on the same sort of idea, the same sort of pattern. This tends to be a nice little selling point and you can put a nice leather thong through that as well. And that looks really, really cool. Have quite a set, put it like a center line. I just did a rough center line down there. So let's just put a center line coming down through the middle. We're gonna measure out around about 15 millimeters out on either side. And we're gonna put a straight line going across so we've got this arrow shape of around about 30. We're gonna come down to this sort of shape and this is completely, completely free form. You can do whatever you particularly want to do. Practice using a nice simple form. Don't try and have anything that is too thin because don't forget the silver has to travel. Uh, we've got this idea this little triangle, so you can just about see that there. And now from that, we're going to simply carve out our pattern. Pen knife is all you need to carve this out. I'm just gonna come in at an angle. If you do make a mistake, that's tough because you can't replace the cuttlefish at all. Once you've carved it, once you've cut it, that's it, you cannot do anything else with the piece. You'd have to stop, throw it away, and start again. Try not to breathe in this dust as well, although I don't think it's, uh, it's, it's a dangerous type of dust, I wouldn't encourage you to breathe it in. We've got an area we've just cut out and you can use any sort of implement to push into this cuttlefish now to make an imprint. And don't forget, whatever you push into the cuttlefish will come out as a high. So in this instance here, we pushed in a simple uh, screwdriver, a little cross-headed posi drive screwdriver, we pushed it in and as a result, it's made these lovely little pyramids coming up. So you can be as careful as you want. And what you will see is when you compress the cuttlefish, it'll be quite dense. But if you come along with a paintbrush and just rough up the surface a little bit with a paintbrush, you will reveal the lovely cuttlefish texture, which is exactly what we are after. So if you want that beautiful texture, get your paintbrush, just go over what you've carved out blow it away from you. And I'm going to get the end of my uh, needle file. I'm just going to put um, a hole right in the middle and that will appear as a raised section. Just like that. Again, get your paintbrush in there, paint it all around. If you without throwing your pen knife away. Just refine it. It's whatever you want to do. Very, very simple pattern. Reveal all that cuttlefish pattern. Okay, you may be wondering about how we're going to get the silver. We've made up our cavity, little simple triangular cavity. Here is the pouring channel. So let's get our pen knife, carve that out. And what I tend to do is, is especially when I'm doing these techniques, this is also the pouring channel, all right? Same with this one. 
it has to be quite large to get the silver into the mold as fast as possible. I use one of the sanding drums to push down in this area. And we can utilize that as part of the model itself, but also it enables the silver to flow down this channel in through this area and straight into the mold. Make it nice and straight. And then put the tops together. And because this is only acting as the back, we've got a gorgeous texture on this. Put it together. You can see where your pouring channel is. Do the same on there. Try and come down to the same depth as well and do exactly the same. Scrape that out as well. Put them all together. Have a look to see. And that is where our silver is going to be entering our mold. I want to make it a bit bigger. So get your scribe and just mark on either side. Use the sanding drum. I'm actually going to put this into my flex shaft and I'm going to come along and just do this. Be careful because this kicks up quite a bit of dust. Put those two together and you can see our pouring channel now is nice and the silver is going to come into this channel straight down and to fill our model. Try and have it so the silver flows without being interrupted. What you don't want to do is for the silver to flow down and stop. It has to flow and go into the mold. So that little hard little stop area there I've just smoothed off. We're going to incorporate that into our design and you'll see how all this comes together once we have cast. Likewise on here. Super. All right then. So that's our mold quickly made up. We can put that together like that. Can we go a bit deeper with that? Let's have a look. Yeah. Super. All right then. So that's what we're going to do. We need to bind this together with some binding wire. You can use some tape if you want to, although the tape may end up burning. Get your wire, wrap it around your cuttlefish a few times to hold the mold together. That's all this is going to do. Break that off and then those two free ends come along with your pliers and twist them nice and tight to hold the mold together. Now, if you're doing this in your home, I would suggest you do it right by an open window. If this is going to smell, we've got molten metal going down into the hole. It's going to burn the cuttlefish, but the silver will take the shape of the mold before the burning has really taken place. So it's going to get that gorgeous, gorgeous texture before the cuttlefish really does start to burn. So you need to put this in a nice area that is a, a heat proof area. Perhaps you've got like a bucket or a bowl of sand. Put this in the sand so it stays upright. You want this so if you happen to spill any silver out of this area, it'll go in the sand and not all over your lovely worktop or your kitchen worktop or heaven forbid a, a dining room table. I know this doesn't look quite straight, but I've got the inside looking exactly as I want it. I've got a little soldering area that I'm going to bring onto my bench and we're going to use this. This is a nice, gorgeous, heat proof area where we can do all our melting down. And I'm going to use a, a third hand to put my mold simply into place like that. In fact, I will turn it around this way because when I start to heat up, 
the silver, I'm going to do it in this area by here, and then I can pour it into here. The flame will be coming in this direction, so it's going to be avoiding that piece of cuttlefish. All right, we've got a small little two inch crucible on a nice crucible handle, and this is what we're going to use. Now, I know what a lot of you are saying, well, how much silver do I need to fill up my mold? Well, you have to work out for yourself. This is something that I cannot do for you, but what I suggest you do is have enough silver to fill up this top area here as well. So you're gonna need a lot of silver. I have got some old bits of sprue, that I've had in the past. I'm expecting this little much of the area here is gonna fill my model. So I may need a little bit more than that. I'll actually put those two pieces together there. And you can even get away with using one of these torches. This is the big brother of one of these. If you've got one of these, these little handheld torches, don't bother trying this technique because this torch is never gonna heat up what you've got in there. I would suggest you use something like this or even a sievert torch or a hoke or um, a gas or plumber's torch, something like that because this is quite a lot of silver we've got in this crucible here. You're gonna also need a little bit of borax powder as well. As you can see, flux borax powder, you use this to sprinkle upon the silver. All right then, heat proof area, cuttlefish all in position, silver in position. I've got my safety glasses as well. Very, very important to put on when you're melting down. And we're gonna to start to melt this. And the idea is we're gonna melt this down. When you think it's ready to pour, you wait another 30 seconds, you put some borax powder onto this, pour it into the cuttlefish, and it'll all be done without a problem. And you virtually get 99% success rate if providing the model or the mold that you use is quite wide and quite deep in the cuttlefish itself. All right then, let's get melting down. The smaller the torch, the longer this process is going to take. So with this type of torch, this is a, a GT6000, I'm not quite sure where they make this model. I know Sievert do a large handheld torch like this. Make sure that the handle is full of gas before you start. What you don't want to do is have to stop halfway through to refill the handle. So make sure it's all completely full up before you start. Alternatively, get yourself a nice Sievert torch or a large gas canistered torch and it will really help speed up this process. Okay, we've got about three or four minutes into this. You can see how the surface of that silver is really lovely and clean. Get a bit of borax on that surface, make sure it's lovely and clean. Swoosh it around, make sure there's no little lumps you can just see coming through the surface. When you cannot see anything and it's swishing around the crucible nicely, give it another 30 seconds. Make sure that that silver is lovely and molten on the inside as well completely before we even consider pouring it into our cuttlefish. So another 20 to 30 seconds should be fine to get just above melting point, then we can put it into our mold. Keep tapping it, make sure all the impurities come to the surface and we're ready to pour. One, two, three, and in it goes. You can see straight away a lot of silver. You've got the excess that's just come around the bottom here as well. That's fine, that's the whole idea of what we've got this particular heat proof area is for. We're gonna allow that now to cool down. You can put it into some cold water, but that's looking cool. All right, and give it five minutes and we're gonna open that up and I'll show you what that looks like. So I ended up putting this in the water because I really couldn't wait. It was taking a long time to cool down, obviously, because of the huge amount of silver we had in here. All right, let's open this up and have a look and see what we've got. You can see what I mean about the cuttlefish. It really does disintegrate. We really do have to throw all this away. And then what we've got left in here is our washing some water for you to have a look at, is our model. 
All these little bits around here are the flashings. Uh, some people suggest that when you make the mold, you do a few little channels leading out to let the air out. Um, what I find is that you don't need it because the cuttlefish is quite um, a porous type of material. So there we go. Let's just get a bit more um, water in around the areas and give that a bit of a clean. So you can see the areas that we carved. This, <laughs> perhaps I pushed that. <laughs> uh, I pushed the um, handle of my needle file just that little bit too far into the model. I may just have to cut that down a little bit. I'm surprised how well that has actually come out. So you can see the design, you can see the pattern upon the back. You can make this as neat or as rough as you want to. Because we've got this little area by here, as I have done with the others here, this is the area of the pouring channel. I've simply drilled a hole across the width of it and from there we can put like a, a chain or even what looks better is like a nice black leather thong and I've done the same on that one as well. So we need to just trim off the top across here, trim off these little excess skaggy bits, these little bits upon the bottom and then you can do whatever you want to do. You can use something very simple, you can use like a brass brush to clean up the silver, it's not gonna need a lot of polishing. I love this texture and I watch how I want to keep that texture. You can polish it with a wire brush, like a brass bristle brush, as I've shown you on our YouTube channel, cleaning up silver chains, you can use that. It'll get a nice bit of a, um, a shinish to it. You can use a, bra, a bristle brush, sorry, to go over it and clean it in all these areas because don't forget you've got all these gorgeous, gorgeous little areas that you don't want to get rid of. This is the fantastic characteristic of cuttlefish. I'm gonna go over this with a brass brush, then I'm gonna cut across the top here. So that then is what we've got. That is gonna be our arrowhead clean up all these little areas. We're gonna put it in some platinol or some liver of sulfur just to give it that antique look as we've got here. And then just wipe it over with a rag just to remove the liver of sulfur off the high spots. And that's what we're going to be left with. So I'm not gonna bore you with the simple way of just using a piercing saw and just trimming off these little areas where the silver has just eased its way through the casting. You can simply get the piercing saw and then we're going to go across the end to cut that through. A quick go with the brass mop or the brass brush and a bit of hot soapy water, get a bit of shine, liver of sulfur and that then is our cuttlefish casting of an arrowhead. Hope you enjoyed that. My name's Andrew Berry, and don't forget if you've enjoyed this film, please give us a like, share it with your friends, and also if you haven't done already, please subscribe, and don't forget to click that little bell icon so you can be notified when more films go live on our YouTube channel. But in the meantime, my name's Andrew Berry for At The Bench's YouTube channel. Thank you for watching. I will see you on the next film. Bye-bye.